So Sai, yeah, I've been training my model for a while now and it's producing nice images. Ah, that's good to hear. I'm hearing a but though. But images alone are not that interesting. So how do you do that cool video stuff that you showed off earlier? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> let's never do like cooking. I was expecting this to be <laughs> Basic rendering, okay? It's about rendering. <laughs> no argument <Stop>. this time. <laughs> intro huh no more cooking in intros <laughs> too much of a mess but do tell me in the comments in general if you like the intros or not so today we're in front of a whiteboard because before we go into the actual rendering tutorial I'd like to talk about some theory so we can have a bit of a better understanding this is of course optional you can skip it and here is gonna be the overview of the entire video so you can navigate freely. But yeah, so we're going to talk about the theory first a little bit, then I'm gonna actually go to the actual code and then later on I'm gonna compare some results. So, um, the one important thing to talk about to get an idea of what we're actually rendering and how we can work with that and how we can manipulate it is the latent space. So, the latent space gets created in the procedure of training the generative adversarial network. And we can imagine the latent space basically as lots of points in a super high dimensional field, I believe is the right word. Been a while since I did math in English. So, um, we have like lots of points here and all of these points correspond to images so for example if we are on the metropolitan data set it might be that like a point over here corresponds to like a base point over here it's like sculpture, like a bust or something. Ooh. Well, I'm not the artist here, that's why I use AI. So let's try this a little bit better. Good enough. <laughs> so, um, each of these points corresponds to an image and uh, all the points in, uh, together form the latent space. And this latent space has one interesting property that we can use in the video creation, and that is that points that are close to each other in the space have a similar image. So if we have like another point over here, that might be like a similarly shaped vase but it has like some stripes on over here or something. Something that is visually close to the other point here. And this property is what we use to do like the cool morphing video stuff in an effect. Um, for what we do now is if we have like points here we can then since this is like just vectors in our high dimensional space, we can basically calculate the line between two points and then sample more points along the line. And if we, for example, go somewhere here, we might find something like a vase shaped face that also has some hair 
or something along the lines of that. Right. So, how are we going to use that in the rendering algorithm and in the rendering script that I present today is we're going to use lots of random samples and then basically um, for our random samples we compute a path along the random samples by doing some interpolation like here and that will then just give us one continuous video because every single frame is close enough in coordinates to the previous frame that it looks like a smooth transition. And that's the entire trick behind rendering the video. So, the video script that I'm presenting now is adapted from the one that was shipped originally with um, the release of Progressive Gun. They had a lot more utility scripts back in the day uh, that allowed you to render out fancy stuff and play around with that a bit more. Uh, they didn't really release all the interesting utility stuff. I mean, they released plenty, but they also dropped a bit from the uh, release of Stylegen and Stylegen 2. And this is going to be one of the scripts that I use for rendering videos um, that was adapted back from the Progressive Gen times. So, full disclosure and everything. So yeah, let's get into the code and then later on we'll discuss um, all the rendering stuff that we can do with this and all the different parameters that we can use when rendering out the video. So we're back in Ubuntu. Today we're talking about the rendering of videos from StyleGAN 2 models. And for this specific purpose I've written some custom code. So the first thing we're going to do is to rename this to old2 actually and check out my fork um, that I'm hosting on GitHub of StyleGAN2. Nice. So and then we're going to copy over all the stuff we had from last time where we had the um, um, where we had the training yeah copied all over so um, the most important new file is this render video script that I put in here so for a little bit of a history lesson here um, going back to progressive growing of GANs, which was one of the original big NVIDIA GUN papers and GitHub repositories, it came with a file called util scripts. And that file had lots of cool methods like generate fake images, generate interpolation video, generate training video, and so on and so forth, that are. Um, we go to the StyleGAN2 master. Uh, they have the run generator, no more util scripts or anything. And in the run generator, they just generate images and they do the style mixing example. But they basically only put in here what they needed to share for the paper and none of the fun utility stuff that they used to put. Um, but fortunately, if we look at, for example, how the generator here actually generates images that happens here. Uh, it uses a GS run code and the GS run is actually just uh, more or less a function that is loaded from the pre-trained network. And that format has not changed at all since the progressive growing of Gantz version. Uh, if we see here, uh, it still has GS run or it already had GS run and GS was also loaded from a network pickle, so a snapshot of a trained model. Um, we can see here the GS run has like a lot more arguments and allows us to do a bit more stuff or guess a bit more stuff that we can do. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the point here is the th 
uh, the method of how we do stuff here hasn't really changed. Uh, the rendering works kind of the same way that we just uh, generate latent, which are these points in the latent space. And then for each latent, we get out one image. And then if we have a lot of similar latents followed by each other, then they generate like similar frames and we get a video. So what I've basically done is I took this code and ported it over to Stygen 2 or, well, technically this kind of code already runs with uh, models loaded from Stygen. You can put in any network pickle here that is either from Progressive GAN or Stygen or Stygen 2. And this whole rendering code works the same. Let's look at the file that I actually wrote here. Here, this is the new file. And first of all, there's a wall of arguments. I'm going through them one by one. Uh, and then there's this. Um, so this here, uh, for those who have seen the training video might look like the familiar arguments uh, when we look at back in run training. Where is it? Down here. We actually have the same kind of structure with parser at argument that just allows us to take arguments from the command line and pipe them into the um, program. So uh, what do I do for, with that in render video? In render video, I made all of the important parameters you need for actual um, rendering of the video. I made them all accessible via command line. So for example, the most important ones are like network pickle, which is the snapshot from which you're rendering and the model from which you're rendering and uh, the duration, the frames per second, the truncation psi for those who already know what that is. Um, yeah, basically all the arguments that you can use for uh, rendering the video can be entered in the command line and then we use that network pickle to uh, load the networks and those are used later on here in this line uh, to render out the actual video frames. As you can see here by make frame. Um, for those who like uncompressed video, I also edited in the option to um, render it out as a PNG sequence every single frame. There was a specific request by one of my artist friends whom I'm going to shout out later. Um, it basically, this is all just set up. We calculate how many frames are there are um, from the duration seconds and the frames per seconds. We generate and initialize the random state. We select a file name if none is given uh, based on the network snapshot. Then we load all the stuff. Then we prepare latents, which here is just a random sample. So we randomly sample points as I showed earlier on the whiteboard. And then we put a Gaussian filter. This basically smooths points out. Um, so we kind of get like an average trajectory through all random points. And that gives us like similar enough points that we can actually have a video and of uh, similar frames that morph into one another instead of just having random images flash in front of our face. Uh, and then there's here some normalization and basically this just, all of this are just some kind of debug commands that I left in um, to check if uh, the latent vector that we're rendering here has the right kind of shape for this. Um, yeah, and then the actual rendering starts here. So um, this is a function that is uh, just called by um, MoviePy down here if you decide to render an MP4. Um, I have to define it above here, I think still in Python. That's why it's here, but it's also here in the original util script um, from progressive GAN that's where I built all of this script on top of. So uh, didn't really see a point of changing that. But what actually happens after all this initialization code up here 
is that um, we look at the PNG sequence boolean. So it's just a flag that tells me render as MP4 or render the whole thing as a folder of PNG. So each frame becomes one uncompressed PNG image. Yeah, and then basically what happens is we define the result sub -tier and make sure that the folder exists. And then what we do here is we have in a for loop um, from zero to the number of frames, which we calculated up here as uh, we calculated from the duration and the frames per second. So we have the number of frames and then we go through zero to number of frames. And for each of that, we print out which frame we're generating. Then we take um, the latent for that frame. So the point that we sampled and smoothed out to get a nice trajectory from the latent space or in the latent space, we take those coordinates and call them the current latents. Uh, this does nothing. I just copy pasted this weirdly. Um, it's still just latents are the latents of that frame. And then uh, this is some stuff that we don't need, just labels. Um, that is a necessary argument for the rendering function, but we don't actually do anything with this in this example. And then basically we just render the images. So um, we give the latents and all the other fun options uh, or parameters into the rendering function. So this GS is actually representing the generator of our um, trained generative adversarial network. And then we run it with the latent coordinates and get an image. Um, and that is then saved here as frame number PNG, basically, in our result sub -tier. Um Yeah, this here is just for the uh, color encoding. And this is for the grid size, which is basically how many images do you want to render in a grid for each frame. So, um, for the movie version, it basically does more or less the same, just a bit more complicated because we use MoviePy to uh, and pipe in the make frame function to kind of um, have this rendered while writing the video. It's basically the same, uh, it's just written a bit differently. So. Um, the version with the PNG sequence is probably easier to understand. But if you want to render an MP4, that's also perfectly supported here. So that's enough about ex uh, explaining the script. It basically does everything we need. This is some helper functions here uh, for loading the random latents or for generating random latents. That's just the points on the whiteboard. Uh, some code for loading uh, the networks, the neural networks and the generator specifically from um, the pickle snapshot file. This has also um, been in StyleGAN and ProgressiveGAN somewhere in the code. I just put it all in one place so that this file can just run on its own and render the stuff. And then this is just... Um, to get a good readable ID string from a checkpoint. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, let's look at the arguments a bit. Um, as you can see, there's only one that is required true. All others have like reasonable defaults. So all you really need to do for rendering your first video with a script is to actually um, give a network pickle. So let's do that right now. We go to terminal. So now I'm just gonna use the command that we uh, aliased in the setup video, which was ndocker style 2 to enter the docker container. Um, now I navigate to my style 2 folder, which is here where we can find the um, 
render video hopefully i'm blind there it is <laughs> for some reason it was not green uh probably because i actually wrote it on a windows machine and it doesn't have like the proper change mod anyway um i also have some snapshots in here so this is Flickr faces hd this is a metropolitan model and this is a runway model that i trained in stylegun one because the beauty of the script is it can actually take any model that was trained with pretty much any of the progressive guy in stylegun stylegun 2 and um yeah just render video so we're gonna try this now um let's do render video and if you just enter this it will also just give you all the parameters and as you can see the important one that is not in brackets is network pickle so let's give that one um and i put this in snapshots and we have tab completion here so let's uh let's try metropolitan first uh-huh well there's a little problem in this uh docker that i set up here i haven't actually put in all the utility packages in python um, let's quickly look at the render video file at all the imports okay so these all seem to work it's only the movie pie down here we actually added the docker file and um, And we will now install uh, MoviePy in here. I uh, don't really care which version. I just assume the newest one will do. And then we docker build here, minus T, style again two. And this should now use our cached version of the docker image which was just this one so basically everything up to the installed movie pie um, which was our previous environment so now we um, build the movie pie actually into the docker environment and now we should be able to use it correctly um, so cd home, cd style again, python render video, and the network pickle for that is uh, in snapshots metropolitan. So let's see again. And now it actually starts the rendering process, yes. So let's go over into the results folder videos and let's see. So uh, this is the code that I meant uh, when explaining the file name. So I'm using the um, sna uh, network snapshot number and the seed uh, of the random state. So if you set um, the random state to this exact number you will be able to render out the exact same video again because with the seed the um, the random points that we sample from the latent space are deterministic and then it will recreate the exact same frames which is kind of neat and i will actually use that later on to um, render the same video multiple times with different parameters so we can kind of compare what all the rendering options in Stylegun 2 actually do. Okay, now we have this beautiful video of the moving parts. Uh, yep, 
yeah, basically this um, video of different museum pieces melting into each other. Okay, cool. So we fixed our Docker, we fixed every, uh, we managed to render a video. Now, um, as before, when we just called this without anything, we can see it also gives us all the different arguments. And if you wanna know a bit more about what that all is, you can say H for help. Um, and it explains or writes you all the descriptions that I wrote for this. Um, let's do a little bit of, let's try two more renderings. Um, the first will be um, a runway one. And this time let's do like a three by two video. So grid X we call three, grid Y we call two. So this is how you give the extra parameters, um, just dash dash and put it in. Uh, and let's, let's do this as just a 10 second video because we wanna render a bit faster. Uh, did I not? Oh, I, it's pickle, not snapshot. My bad. Here we go. So we're loading the network again. Starting to render. And the MP4 just appeared. This will obviously take much longer to render for each frame because each frame is basically um, six frames since we render in a grid three by two. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, while we are talking about rendering time, there's one interesting command called image shrink that will actually render out smaller images. If you give like image shrink two, that gives you um, basically a renders each frame at half resolution. And that's really cool for previews because you can render it out much faster. So um, if you ever are on a deadline and you need to render more stuff and get it right, then you can do like quick previews with like an image shrink of two or three or four. Four would be then, um, well, quarter resolution, for example. So let's look at the video. Now here we see, um, this runway of multiple people shape-shifting between different dresses for 10 seconds. Uh, since it's only a 10 second video, we can also see what happens if we loop because all of these videos, the script renders are made to loop. Like if you don't want it to loop, just cut, it, cut out a piece in the middle, but um, I thought it would be neat to have all these videos actually find their origin in latent space again so that we can have this looping video if needed. It's pretty cool if you wanna do any VJ stuff or what you're into. Okay, um, let's try one last time and this time we are gonna use the flicker faces. And here we are gonna use um, truncation psi because that does fun stuff. So we set truncation psi to like 1.5. Um, and this creates an effect that I think Mario Klingemann kind of first popularized. At least that he's the one where I, that I associate with that effect. Um, he made some heavy truncation videos on YouTube and well, it's a really cool effect. So let's see. Okay. So here you can also see that my script grabs a different name. I called this file Flickr faces HD pre-trained. Um, 
and my script assumes a certain format for the file names of the pickles and then just cuts out the parts that seem interesting or that I found heuristically interesting. Um, so it's a bit arbitrary. It should work in any way. So here's the video. Let's open with VLC again. And as you can see, it's quite a bit more abstract and dreamy or nightmare as however you want to put it, than the usual flicker face output. Um, that's what's kind of interesting about the truncation side. It makes uh, the rendering either more average or further away from the average image, basically is what you can, how you can think about it. And um, the usual value is one, which is just kind of do as you have learned the neural network. Uh, for papers, you usually render in 0.7. So it's slightly more average because those images look a bit more like the real thing. And uh, well, in the art scene, you occasionally go over one because you get all these crazy effects of human-like images. All right, that concludes my presentation of the script. And I will now add it in a section uh, where I compare all the different parameters. So let's see how that goes. So this is the default render, 30 seconds of Flickr Faces HD with truncation of Psi 1 and no special options. Uh, let's try to remember some, like the blue head here maybe, and the glasses here, and maybe this pink haired face. So we're going to now compare this to some other options. So this is truncation of Psi 1, no noise, no nothing, and let's see. So the first variation here is rendering as a grid. Um, it's useful if you want to showcase much of your work at once. And here we can note that none of the four partial videos actually replicates the default video. That's because all four frames are rendered in parallel and the latents are actually distributed um, differently and the randomness is just different. So we can't reuse the seed. Here we can see the image shrink. <laughs> so this is not actually anything that I did in After Effects or Premiere, but the actual um, resolution that the image shrink is rendering out. On the left, you can see the normal render. Top right is image shrink of two and bottom right is image shrink of four. So um, the smaller images render much faster if you need to have a quick preview. So here's something interesting, and that's about the image zoom parameter in StyleGAN2 rendering. On the left side, I've actually used the default video and just scaled it up um, by 200% in Premiere. And on the right side, I used the image zoom factor in StyleGAN2 rendering. I personally don't see a difference, but the right side renders a lot longer, so not necessarily worth it. So let's now look at the smoothing factor. As I said, uh, we randomly sample points and then we smooth over them with a Gaussian filter. And here you can see the effect of the smoothing seconds parameter. In the top left, you have a quarter second, top right is half a second, um, bottom left is the normal default of one second and bottom right is two seconds. So from more changes to more stable. So let's look at the truncation of Psi, which is basically a normalization factor. Uh, here I rendered four videos with um, factors of 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1 from top left, top right, bottom left to bottom right. And you see the top left has much less changes and stays more to somewhat of an average face. Now, on the other hand, here I've rendered 
um, psi factors of 1, 1 1.25, 1.5 and 1.75. You can see the 1 is pretty stable and stays as a face in the top left, but in the bottom right it loses coherence and <laughs> sometimes just drops into abstract patterns. And now to make it even more extreme, I've rendered this whole thing with a psi factor of 1, 2, 3 and 4. And as you can see, uh, once you reach a psi of 4, it's basically just a mess of colors and you barely ever see something that actually resembles a human face. So maybe stick between 0.5 and 2. That seems like a reasonable range. So the last parameter is randomization. We can actually inject some random noise into the rendering function, which leads to this flickering, as you can see on the right side, as compared to the left. Uh, it's mostly visible in fine textures or in the hair here. And that's the last of the parameters. As a general tip, play around with these parameters as much as you can and maybe render the same video twice with different, so you can edit it together later. So thanks for watching this video, I hope it has been helpful to you and as always like, comment and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Um, and also you can follow me on Instagram, I post my work there too. Here's some artwork from the Metropolitan dataset. Then this is the Truncation Psi 1.5 video that I used for the parameter comparison earlier in this video. And at this point, I'd also like to shout out a good friend of mine who goes by the name of Limbic Nation. Uh, he's a pretty cool artist. I did a piece or two with him together. And he actually used the rendering script that I just presented um, on a data set with face masks. So that's some pretty cool result. Um, and if you ever go out and use my stuff and create some artwork, please feel free to just uh, write me or leave a comment and I will check it out and maybe give you a shout out later. Also, also, uh, I actually received some emails of people who tried my tutorials out and that made me really happy because I wasn't sure if there was actually an audience. <laughs> but it's really cool to actually hear from people who use your stuff. But they basically ran into some minor troubles with their terminal environment being slightly different than in my videos. Um, I was able to help them debug the situation and get them on the way to working with StyleGen 2. But I thought it might be nicer to have like one place to chat about problems and basically where I can uh, help people more easily because the business mail is not actually that cool, I found out. But yeah, long story short, I'm adding a 10 euro tier on Patreon and if you give me 10 euro a month, you will get Discord benefits and be able to share your screenshots and ask for questions and just chat with me if you want to. So yeah, if you find these videos helpful and entertaining, I would very much appreciate it if you could just send me a couple bucks a month on Patreon so that I can dedicate more and more time to creating more and more tutorials and showing off more cool stuff. Thanks for watching.